J Carmi 960 here. We're going to do a patch rundown of the recent 1.0 official launch live patch of one of our favorite games, Gunfire Reborn, for me and our friends at Dad Play Studio. I see Echo Fox is waiting for me to play right now. Basically, what we're going to do is cover what's new in the patch, things to look forward to, and just kind of the initial thoughts on what actually has changed and what is for the better, what's for the worse, and just is it worth it, okay? So first, the launch was, yes, uh, Wednesday was the major update, but it went live yesterday, and they already have a small patch where they fixed a bunch of bugs, which is really cool. So you know that they're really all over this. Um, they have uh, an email that you can send bugs to and screenshots. If you can't use the in-game version of it, you can actually just email this email with any issues and screenshots and your name and whatnot, and they can look at it right away. You can obviously see they've already done interaction changes. They've done some bug fixes, if, uh, further optimized anti-cheat system, which is really cool. That's just the patch stuff. But I want to talk about the big, big patch they did, all the new content, the new character, everything. So let's dive into that. So first things first, the 1.0 patch is live. They announced it. The big thing is a whole new area. So we got Act 4, Stage 4, whatever you want to call it. And we got uh, Kian Sui, uh, the new turtle guy you can see here. He's pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, let's go into all of the fun newness. So Kian Sui, we call him Turtle Man. He is the new character. He's pretty cool. He's very upfront and personal. Uh, very good support character. I will say this, Derek Echo Fox here has been playing him and he does a very good job at just being in the way. Um, he does this dash here that you're seeing here with the punches and stuff. That also with uh, some of his ascensions, can put a debuff on the enemy, causing them to take more damage. So it's kind of like the tiger's crit, where it causes enemies uh, to take more damage from other sources. His E does that as well. And then he punches with it, and it's insane. Super high damage, so he's pretty fun. The nicest part about it is that gives him a shield that blocks enemy abilities, and he can res while that's up. So one of the big things in Reincarnation 8, which I do recommend, and even if you're under, you know, max level and you're doing Reincarnation 6, 7, you know, whatever, um, you can revive while that's up. So if somebody's down in the middle of a big pile of people, you can dash in, uh, start punching, and then once you get to the, the person you need to revive, you can obviously revive them, which is really cool. So he is our reviving machine. He does a fantastic job. Uh, Echo does running around and doing that. So he's really good. He feels pretty balanced, does some decent damage. Obviously, you got to give him a good weapon. He's never going to match the damage that like a tiger could put out, but uh, he is definitely in the in the fray so the new levels and i do want to say this right now i know it's all you know that white and blue it still looks gorgeous a lot of the areas are really cool they feel unique you don't feel like you're in the same place over and over again they have a lot of um a lot of depth they're huge massive levels but you have a lot of rocks you have a lot of these towers uh, bridges different things so you do feel like each area is different what's really cool is the enemies in there are awesome i mean you got walruses you've got weird what looks like uh kelthuzad lich king style characters you've got uh the boss himself looks kind of like another turtle um style character so you do have him that you're fighting very very cool uh so that was definitely a lot of fun and that fight is crazy i don't want to do any spoilers for uh, anybody who hasn't fought the boss yet but it is a very fun fight very fast very different um compared to the other fights um but enemies uh i think they show the monkeys that you see here in this little uh gif that they have going are awesome they pick a target and they run and they flip and they fly and they got nunchucks and they just they go you feel like when their presence is there you've got to take care of them and that's fun it feels good when it's not just 
idle enemies kind of running by and you're like, oh, well, I'll just kind of kill them as I see them. Not really the end of the world. None of them are any too threatening. These dudes get up on you. And especially like when I play the tiger, if one of them's like, hey, I'm going for the tiger, he's coming for me. Okay. And there's a giant version of him, which is like a giant snow ape. Uh, there's a UFO, which is awesome. Uh, the UFO is super, super cool. He puts shields on everything. He, uh, or it, I guess, I don't know, uh, they, them, the flying saucer it really puts a steady stream of life energy um oh the boss is a polar bear it's polar bear turtle thingy i don't know whatever this thing is yeah it's a polar bear echo you're right i'm dumb uh it is a polar bear uh so yeah but it's super sweet like he's super fun but anyway flying saucer is super cool uh you got the walruses you've got fishermen dudes you got people throwing ice around you got like ice flamethrowers i guess ice throwers Ice sword sounds wrong, but it literally acts like a flamethrower, but it's with ice. Super fun. I love it. The only thing I would say is, again, as we're covering good and the bad, it would be really cool if they added an ice element to the game. I mean, you have all these cold and frost and all this other stuff, but they don't actually, like, I feel like they're acting like it's, like, normal damage. There's no you know it's it's fire ice or it's fire uh poison and lightning let's add ice so what's the um <laughs> polar monarch <laughs> yes actually it is a polar monarch um let's add ice you know you can change corrosive to be a slow still like you can make like fire still burn lightning still damage shields and cause them to take more damage you can change corrosive instead of it being like the slow change it to be kind of like the bridge between fire and ice where it's partially a dot and it's partially a slow and then you can have ice be like the slow or even a high enough level of it be a frost or something that would be really cool that's the only thing out of this whole thing i would love to see because there is no ice element and we have a full ice area like you have a square block and you have a square hole put the block in the hole it just makes sense right that would be the only thing i would even remotely come to saying maybe there might be something else but that's it that's all i have so far but all the enemies super fun have a blast when you're in there and enjoy just kind of the artwork around them is great the the way they move feels very natural to their design it's just super fun okay uh moving on to the weapons there's two new weapons that they added uh icy spear which is a blast to use bowman picked up one of these in our um our reincarnation eight and just rocketed with damage. He was playing the cat and he tossed him, tossed him, tossed him, and then you would right click and you suck them all back into you. And it doesn't refund ammo, which I thought was kind of weird. I would rather see, this is one of those other things. I'm not like, oh, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. So it has the ammo capacity and build like a prism. So it's one in the chamber, just constantly throwing, no reload or anything. But when you right click, as you can see in this little gif here, it all sucks back to you and it does damage on its way back. That's what it's saying. Throw ice, cause AOE after you hit it and it all comes back to you. Um, subsequent enemies take crit damage, blah, blah, blah. I'm pulling it back to me. Why don't I get it refunded? Right. Make it part of like using it as like a very skill thing. What I would rather see the weapon instead of having, you know, one out of 167 ammo, you have a really good chance to make a nice unique weapon here do it like one out of 30 and have like have it be like special ammo where it's a very small magazine kind of like the sniper rifles are my bloody drills and and uh, piercing flames always have like you know a smaller magazine have it be smaller but when you right click because you can toss these things fast as you can see you just toss 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 have you right click and you get any of those spinning ones back and that would give you kind of more incentive to use the right click more often or be uh, more mindful of your spear spinning because that would be really, really fun. Just right click, pull it back and just launch it. Just yeah, it is an inscription, but it would be nice. Um, Echo is telling me here just in case you guys can't see the chat, which I don't think you can on the screen, but um, he's telling me the ammo refund is an inscription for it. And that is true. However, it would be cool if that was just like part of the weapon, right? I, I don't know. I think there needs to be some tweaking to this, but overall this weapon is super fun to use. You feel really strong when you use it. And there's a lot of times where you're waiting for people to do their chalice and stuff and you're just standing there and you're just throwing spears because it's funny to watch them spin. Um, 
and it's a projectile that other people can see. So your allies can see where the spears are spinning on the ground. Not a lot of the uh, projectiles and stuff in the game have that ability, but that one definitely does. Uh, def deafening mor uh, mortar, a little underwhelming. Feels kind of like a frenzy shark. It's, uh, you know, um, Echo picked up a decent one early and it just doesn't really scale like some of the other weapons. So it'll be neat to kind of see. It's like it's a mixture between Talisman with the right click three shot where you kind of charge it up and you launch three um, and the Frenzy Shark where she's kind of like lobbed little balls. So it's cool. It's a new weapon. I like to see what they do with it. The base version of it, I think, is kind of neat. It'll be it'll be kind of interesting to see what they can do with it to make it a little more viable. Because right now, it's just a little underwhelming. It's just outperformed by an illusion. Um, I would even say it's outperformed by like a hell or even a pupil. So I like it. I don't love it. It's neat, but I want to see something really happen to it to make it like stand out and be like, oh, that's awesome. Um, new inscriptions, really cool. They did manual reloading, so now um, anytime you actually hit the button to reload, you get 10% damage if uh, you had 40% accuracy in the magazine that you just fired out of. So as long as your first one is 40% accurate when you reload, that next magazine, the whole magazine clip has 10% bonus damage, which is nice. Um, this one is really strong. I feel like when we first saw it, we were undervaluing it, but each hit gains 3% weapon-based damage for five seconds, up to 15 stacks. So you're looking at 45%, but you lose one stack on a miss. There are times where you get benefits and bonuses, and it's for a trade-off. So you get, you know, rate of fire increase, but you, or you get like lucky shot, but you lose rate of fire, or you get this, but you lose that. This is a fantastic contription. It's just a pure damage increase. And how many times are you running around just fire, 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 fire? Even if you're sitting steadily at a five, six, seven stack, that damage increase is nice. Like <laughs> It's just a good one to get. This one is a great Gemini. I like this new one here. This is more for Aobai the doggy. Um, killing an enemy with a held weapon increases the base damage of the next shot from your offhand weapon by 50%. There's a couple things in the game that really want to push weapon swapping. So you have that um, weapon swap scroll that when you're swapping weapons, you're immune to damage for a second. Uh, you have plant spore Gemini already. I just find it hard to try to level two weapons to make two different weapons viable instead of having like two, like a plus, you know, eight weapon and a plus 12 weapon. I would rather just have a plus 20 weapon. It's just gonna be better performing, usually. Generally speaking, that's usually how it is. Unless you're the dog, dual wield, you know, you get battle tested level three and as you're firing, your battle tested just lasts longer. This Gemini works very well, just like the Spore one does, uh, just like the Rate of Fire one does. So this is definitely one that does it. You know, 50% damage out of your offhand weapon by 50% is pretty big. So you you want to manipulate your weapons to where your highest base damage weapon is in your offhand or your right hand, your weapon slot two, um, and then you just dual wield and rock and roll. Really, really cool. I really like it. Um, Woodpecker has its own special uh, inscription that you can get. 0.5 times crit for every crit hit within two seconds. And as anybody who's used the Woodpecker knows, it's very fast attacking. You hold right click is pew, 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 and just flies. This can go up to uh, plus 10 times crit. I saw a Woodpecker that had it. I did not pick it up, but I do want to try it because with the Tiger, and that's who I play primarily, this can stack really high. The problem is it's only for two seconds, so it's really hard to kind of manipulate this and make it feel like it's something that you can say, okay, I want to make this work, right? It's not, um, it's not a chance to create ball on crit. It's not a deal three crits in a row, your next shot has 150% lucky shot chance. Some of the other inscriptions that you can kind of build around, this is cool, but I don't think it's a build around inscription purely because the duration is only two seconds. Now, if they changed it, and this is another one of those, it's good, but I think it could do a change. Change it to where it is until you miss. 
change it to where it's a stack thing, kind of like this 3% weapon base damage. I would love for this to go down to plus 5%, keep the stack the same, change this to 5% and just say it increases when you crit, it decreases when you miss. That's something you can build around. And I would love to give a, a woodpecker a chance uh, if I had that inscription on it, plain and simple. So it's fun, it looks cool, I haven't done it yet, hardcore, but two seconds makes it really hard, it's good for in combat, but I don't think anything crazy game breaking out of it, but I would love to see if you're doing something like this, it's so unique, there's nothing else that's really like this one, I would rather see it be like this one, gain it, lose one stack when you miss, okay? This one obviously stays for five seconds, you could probably put a five second, five second thing on it, but this is just general hits, doesn't matter. This is, um, you gotta crit. So if you're hitting and you're not critting, like, you know, those octopus are turning their heads or you're shooting into a shield of the horse heads or, you know, the uh, those guys in act two, it, it drops your stacks, right? Um, I don't wanna backtrack, but I did wanna say one thing here. We did find a rainbow that had this on there and it was kind of funny because it's rainbow. You just hold it down and you're hitting. <laughs> like plain and simple. So it's a really good inscription to get on a on a uh, rainbow. Um, moving on, they have changed a lot of these ones here. I definitely recommend just kind of looking over. I'm not going to dive into it too much because these are already current um, inscriptions. The only thing is uh, they did change... Um, one of the big things for the tiger is consume no ammo for two seconds, 50% rate of fire when it's on. Um, they, they change it, they drop the rate of fire on this one. So if you get anything like that, you don't have that kind of hold right click and just pop, 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 and go real fast, let go of right click, put it back on, you know, scope, let go, scope, scope, uh, and just add 50% rate of fire. Uh, it is now just when you're, when you're scoped in, you just don't consume ammo, which is nice. Um, they balance the fire tower, not a lot of people use it, but it's pretty cool. They just reduce the base damage um, and the elemental effect. Uh, the thunderstorm, they just made it look better or made it work better, optimized behavior of it. Um, they did change some of the requirements, which are really cool. Rogue villain, they dropped uh, the total number of kills. Uh, Demon lore, they dropped from 60 to 40. They just want people to have more access to it, which would be pretty nice. So. Um, I like I like that. <clears throat> moving on down the line. Did my stream go out? Nope, still moving. Okay. Um, reincarnation level eight. This is um, actually you know what? I'm gonna come to this in a second. We're gonna do this one last. Controllers. So they optimize the interaction behavior when using controller. A cursor will now appear um, when players are moving stick. Blah blah. They also just announced on Twitter that there is going to be a console version of this game uh, scheduled to come out 2022, uh, 598 or 528 or something. The studio is doing it with them. It's pretty awesome. So a lot of console gamers, I, I notice on Twitter every time Gunfire tweets anything, like the first 27 comments are, when is it coming to console? When is it coming to console? When is it coming to console? I want to play this on my PS5. I want to play this on my Xbox. When is it coming to console? It's coming. Um, spirit blessings, they changed some of the blessings that you can get. Um, and let's go to some of the scrolls. Uh, the ones just to kind of, these are new enhanced scrolls, so they took regular scrolls and they made enhanced versions of them. Enhanced Devil Covenant, you don't have that minus 50% HP, which is really nice. Um, longer dash and, uh, or sorry, a propulsion, they've uh, added longer dash. This one is a huge one. I hate seeing enhance, or I hate seeing uh, Elite Assassin when you're in, you know, Act 3. And you're like, cool, so glad I got this so late in the game. Now, if you get an enhanced Elite Assassin, it gives you it for all the bosses you've killed this entire run, which is really, really nice. Uh, recover 100% shield or armor when you get enhanced backup shield and the cooldown is only five seconds, which is so good. Um, airbag, 100 HP instantly. You don't lose your HP per second. Against the flow is just, you just start recovering ammo. You don't lose any ammo uh, when you're not in combat. So all the enhanced ones, obviously you can go through and look back at them. Um, but it is insane how good a lot of these are now. Uh, enhanced skateboard is really cool because after you dash for the next two seconds, you don't lose ammo. So not only do you reload right away, 
at one point you kind of get deft hands effect for two seconds you don't have any uh, ammo loss so there is a bazillion of these here and they're all fantastic you no longer are going to look at enhanced scroll and be like oh maybe i don't they're all really good i cannot stress it enough um now let's talk about the new legendary scrolls or just new scrolls in general because they're really really good um Elemental Magazine, deal an additional 50% damage when your damage causes an elemental effect. No brainer. Pretty much the best weapons in the game, aside from Bloody Drill, are elemental. And Bloody Drill is even better if it's an elemental Bloody Drill. You get a lightning or a fire enchant on it. Fire enchant is obviously the best. But uh, yeah, that would be absolutely amazing to get. And it actually is a big 50%. Uh, this one is really nice. Reasonable luck. The downside is not really there. So you have 80% lucky shot chance, which is cool, but your total lucky shot chance can't go over 150%. That downside really isn't existent. <laughs> it doesn't really exist. You have to basically say that when I pick this up, I can't have more than 70% lucky shot chance from any other source. Who cares? Pick it up. It's fantastic. The only people who are going to have over 150% anyway, uh, you have some sort of crazy nutty setup and you have, you know, um, I know Aobai and a couple other Ascensions have like, oh, bonus lucky shot chance when you're doing this. Like he, the dog has a uh, bonus lucky shot when you're dual wielding, you know, and you have to go into your Ascension for it. But this thing, you're pretty much never going to hit this negative. And even if you do, it's never going to be a negative to where it's like, oh, I already have 150% lucky shot chance, so this 80% is not doing anything. You rarely are going to have 150. You can. I'm not saying never. I've had it. I think I had one game. I had like 240 something before like the scroll even came out, and all my damage was just red numbers flying everywhere. But very rarely are you ever going to see this as a oh I can't pick it up because I'm going to get a negative effect. It's just 80% lucky shot chance. It's awesome. This is absolutely insane. Riches, privileges. Um, coin shot got changed. It's no longer 60% um, damage. Consume ammo. If you kill something, you get it back. This is... Uh, coin shot is now 30% lucky shot chance on every shot. Um, if you get a lucky shot then your aunt it doesn't consume the thing but if you kill something the money's gone okay so coin shot got nerfed a little bit it's still good but it, it, it's you got to have the money for it this one is absolutely insane deals additional skill damage based on current copper you own when your skill does damage up to one time per enemy every three seconds if you're running the tiger if you're running the cat it's pretty good um, if you're running the bird and you're just flying and kicking or even the turtle, I mean, pretty much everybody but the, the cat because the cat can get the multiple pulses of his ball. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's no cap to it. You know how the old uh, one was like, oh, yeah, um, unfettered will, I think it was called. It was gain additional 3% damage for every 100 copper you get maxed out at 30%. There is no max to this. And I will say this on our Twitter, on the Dad Play Studio Twitter, you can find it. This thing was absolutely crazy. I picked this up and I had like 17K money and I literally crit for 9.2 mil. Like, absolutely nutty. I had a plus 40 piercing flame and I shot and it was just a huge amount of damage. As soon as I picked this, this thing up, it was no contest. I was just hitting so hard because there is no cap so the more copper you have and there's no formula i don't know it at least they haven't said anything there's nothing on the scroll either so i don't know what it is but i'm imagining 17 to 20k money was probably you know every hundred was like 10 percent or something i don't know like every thousand was like 10 percent damage like it was just insane I, I started popping it derek will tell you or uh, echo will tell you bowman will tell you i was just absolutely killing stuff um overwhelming shield is cool you just recover shield when you're below 50%, if your shield starts recovering and they hit you, it doesn't stop, which is nice. Um, upon taking damage, gain an additional max shield or armor uh, with fight for immortality, equivalent to the damage received. So the cooldown is 45 seconds. This is really good for bosses if you're running around and you haven't been hit for a while or going into the boss fight and you haven't taken any damage or, you know, you it, it's still on cooldown it doesn't refresh when you take damage so the last time it worked 45 second cooldown you can take damage during that time that timer will still go down but it's nice it can actually save you it's uh it just turns you 
into uh, a better tank. So you get hit by you know the the first guy's big smash, and for 12 seconds, whatever damage that would have dealt to you is now a shield or armor, which is nice. Um, this hidden transaction. Oh boy, where do I even start? This thing is crazy. This might be the best scroll that they've added. Uh, yeah, you have a one third chance to gain plus one extra level when you're enhancing your weapon and it costs no extra money. So it's not like, oh yeah, you enhanced, but it costs, you know, it took your 600 and did a second 600. It's literally just an extra chance to get plus one. I've had it where I had three in a row. I've had it where I've had none. Most of the time though, because obviously it's a one third chance, when you go to a craftsman, you now get plus four for the cost of plus three, which is really nice. Here's the kicker. It's not a bind on pickup scroll. So we were playing last night, us three, and we would go to a craftsman and first person use it, drop the scroll. Second person pick it up, use it, drop the scroll. Third person pick it up, use it, and then we move on. Next time we get to a craftsman, first person use it, drop the scroll, so on and so forth. Uh, I finished with a plus 40 weapon. I think Bomo was plus 27. Um, Echo picked up a really good illusion later in the game, and he was still able to get his to like 16, 17, 18. And yeah, it was just pretty cool. Uh, it was really nice. So this, I think, is a very undervalued um, rare scroll. They might change this to a legendary or to nerf it. I would I would like to see this go down to maybe 25% and then have like an enhanced version be 50%. Um, but this is really good. Like, it's absolutely insane how good this is. Um, terrific Crossfire. Kill Venomous Lizard 20 times. This is minus one second on primary skill cooldown upon casting a secondary skill. Note that there is no cooldown. So if you can spam your Q, I'll call it your Q, your secondary, you can lower your cooldown of your primary as fast as you want. So anytime you need to burst, anytime you have you know any sort of Q synergy, your secondary synergy where you're gaining it back, where you're doing other things, um, or if you're the turtle, and you're dashing and you're in the middle of doing it and you're mash, 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 uh, it's awesome. It definitely helps you. So it's pretty nice. Um, Here's another just like, oh, 15% chance um, to basically double the damage you deal with your skill. So if you have this, and it's really strong, if you have this plus this, you're just gonna one-shot everything on the planet anytime that thing procs. Like that's the only thing that I was missing with my 9.2 mil is uh, crit is I didn't have this. So it'd have been nice to have it. Uh, Sucker Punch is awesome great for um, killing anybody that has high health. Uh, this is really good on the tiger because a lot of your kills are one shot kills. Just extra skill damage when you hit an enemy that's above 70% HP. Pretty nice. And then this one is pretty cool. The more um, shield and armor you have, the higher your skill damage is. So for every five total HP and um, shield or armor together. So it's not percentage, which is important. A lot of stuff is like, oh yeah, increase, you know, <clears throat> increase your lucky, like Berserk Scroll, plus 0.5% lucky shot chance for every 1% health you're missing. Okay, cool. Or, you know, bonus damage whenever you have less ammo in the magazine, but it's like based off of percentage. This is just raw numbers. So if you're hitting those red chests that are increases uh, HP uh, and, and shield, this will just scale, which is really nice. So 200 health, uh, you're looking at, you know, math is hard, but that'd be 40, 40% 40 skill damage if you have a combined 200 health and shield. Um, vindictive nature, 40% uh, weapon and skill damage for 10 seconds upon being hit or taking damage. Again, it's just an extra effect that's going. So take damage, deal bonus damage. Um, here's that coin shot I was telling you about. It just changes it to um, lucky shot instead. Fountain of Life uh, increases max HP instead of just, you know, oh cool, I'm at max HP, so it's doing nothing. Um, new achievements, some new daily challenges, which I think they still need to kind of mess with, and then some UI stuff, some audio stuff, uh, networking things, and then a bunch of bug fixes going into this. Um, let's talk, so that's, that's all the big changes here. Um, I wanna talk about Reincarnation 8 because at the end of this video, at the end of covering this, um, I hopefully can have Bowman cut the video in so you guys can see, but, 
this is what I was really excited for. Because anybody who's playing the game now knows Reincarnation 7 is just kind of like a early game stat check. Can you dodge? And then once you get your stuff, it just becomes autopilot, right? Oh, I'm so strong. I got my, you know, um, I got my setup. Uh, I got my Exodia. I assembled the pieces, and now I just kill everything, and I'm unkillable. Cool, you did it. You played the game, and by the time you get to Act 3, now the rest of the game is just, let's just finish it, you know? <clears throat> Pad the DPS meters, throw up the numbers, see what you can do. Reincarnation 8 took that away, and here's why. Um, in this difficulty, players will encounter a plethora of formidable room challenges where only those cunning, skillful, and daring enough will win. And adjust the amount of soul essence needed to refresh spiritual blessings in the tomb entrance. So in the beginning, you can change it. This is the part right here, room challenges. So room challenges and this definition is when you walk into a room and we call it, you know, in the, the early game vaults, you walk into the room and it says, oh, enemies will turn into beetles when they die. We call it OG beetles, right? That's a challenge. When you walk into a room or a new area and you see the little thing at the top right, enemies regain health after falling below 60%. Enemies explode when they die. Enemies turn into desert worms or beetles or whatever. That is what it means by room challenges. And let me tell you, when they say formidable room challenges, they mean formidable room challenges. For instance, they have ones where everybody has a shield on them and the first damage they take is nullified and then a second later that shield falls off. So you have to deal damage and then deal the actual damage. Like it doesn't matter what you hit them with, for one second they're immune and then the shield finally falls off and then you can actually deal damage to them. That one was pretty fun. We had another one where it was, a, it was an act two desert and it was one of those really long, you know, you're running through and you're killing and then you're, you gotta run down one of those big hills. All enemies become immune after taking fatal damage they become immune and they will not die until every single enemy took fatal damage. Which is absolutely insane. They literally were, you, you hit them and you kill them and then their health bar went gray and they're still running around and attacking you. But we had enemies all the way down the hill that we had to go kill. So you have to run through all of the enemies that are spawning and, and fighting you and doing their stuff. And some of them are enchanted with lightning. So you have the lightning things, you have the poison clouds and the fireballs flying because you know, they're enhanced soldiers. Insane. You had to run through them all. It was so cool. But I think the, the creme de la creme, which is they did one where you fought every elite boss at once. So we were in Act 2 Desert and we walk into the big room where it has like those two platforms on the top right and then you go down and you turn to the right and then there's like the portal. It's usually the last room when you're when you're looking at, you know, a certain like stage three or, you know, Act 2 and then stage one, two, three, and four. It's usually stage four. We had the big poison uh, flamethrower guy. We had the shielded henchman guy. Uh, we had the hermit guy who throws those bombs out. We had um, the, the big lizard guy who throws the lightning and the fire and the poison uh, balls out all at the same time. And you're running and kiting and they all have crazy health pulls because it's reincarnation eight. Um, it, it was absolutely crazy. The only reason why we lasted so long is because Echo was playing the turtle and he was able to shield up and run in and re revive us as we were doing it. But yeah, you're fighting five elite bosses at once. Absolutely nutty. So, that's the patch rundown. I hope um, Bowman can um, pull the video and uh, attach that at the end here. Um, I'm going to switch over and play some of the game. But uh, yeah, please, if you do not have this game yet, buy it. If you have it and you haven't played it in a while and you're just looking at what's changed, play it. It is so good right now. I know we've already done 170 hours, 168 hours into it. Um, I, I could easily play Reincarnation 8 for another 160. It is so good. So with that, thank you for watching. Hopefully that answers some questions. If you have any more or you want more information or detail, drop them in the comments below. That way I can come back and read them and, and do a follow-up second one or um, come to my live streams. We do Wednesday nights at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern and come ask me and watch because more than likely we're going to be playing this for the next year or, or so again. So thank you all for watching and enjoy the video that Bowman's going to play. Innumerable elite monsters are coming. 
So does that mean my elite assassin's gonna be like uber charged after this? Oh my god. Oh, that dude's fast elite as fuck. Break, too. Break. <laughs> oh wow, and there's an elite lizard right behind him. What what what, what is shooting the oh, just... oh wow, I'm dead. There's three. <laughs> There's four. All four elites are in this room. All four elites are in this room. Okay, I gotta drag one away. I gotta drag him away. And there's a vault in here too. Are you guys good? I'm dragging the flamethrower guy. I'm dragging the flamethrower guy right now. I can't even get out. Oh man, I'm done. Um, I am too. But I can pop. I'm popping back here. There's no reason not to. I'm trying to get two Bowman. Hold on. Gotcha. And this isn't even like a vault or anything. This is literally what just it. Down behind it. We we you uh, we have to run twenty four seven. If you guys once you pop, you gotta we gotta run. We gotta use this whole room. Yeah. There's no way we're gonna be able to fight them in any sort of corridor or small area. I mean, shit. I can't even get away from those fucking desert coyotes that are attacking me. Right. Where's everybody right now? I'm in the I back. Don't know. Yeah, we're kind of out in the middle of the BFE. Oh, Coyote got me. Right. I still have a revive, but... I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't want to use it right yeah. here. Okay. All right, we do uh, We do have to find our way through, not in this wall. Uh, we haven't even gotten through some of the shields here. Oh, I fucking felt that explosion on my ass. Jeez. I'm on you. <laughs> I'm coming. I had, like, all the Coyotes on me. Oh, damn it. I can't pop. I so. got you. I feel like this is the uh, end I'm ruiner. Out of ammo. Shh, I'm out of ammo. This is the run ruiner challenge. Right. This is mad. Like, this is insane. And there's a vault in here just for kicks and giggles. Yeah, <laughs> just for... The... Elite henchman is the lowest, I think. Yeah, I've been trying to pop him since oh, he doesn't have any health or a shield. Uh, can yeah, you get sure. to him? I'm yeah. getting uh, burned down I'm back running. here. Yeah, I'm dead. Running. I'm dead. I knew I was going down here. I had poison all around me. Um, at this point, oh, uh, I think we're done. Nope. I still got it. I need a revive. Bowman's got me. I'm dashing over this wall here. Yep. Oh, running. God, there's all the explosions. This guy's real low. Oh, I'm down. You're in a pile of goo right now. Yeah. a terrible yep, keep going back. spot. I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. Oh, oh I down. Down right behind you. Down Bowman. Yep, and I'm getting out of this thing here. If you can get behind me. you. Down. Jeez. I, I can't even see where I'm at. I can't either. Oh, oh I can't get now we're all down. Oh, game over. That went down. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit, the bed, Fred. That was insane. <laughs> You know, these guys are making it too hard on our new level. Let's just kill them. Yeah, yeah, basically. Holy cow.